Hello, very good evening, and this is Dr. M. J. Wesley from Paces Diaries. Here we are back with yet another video for you, especially people who are preparing for MRCP UK Paces examination and MRCP UK Ireland. And it doesn't matter whichever internal medicine examination you are preparing for, we got you covered with exciting clinical content. All right, with me, we have content creators for this video, especially my inspiration and my best friend and none other than Dr. Sarake and as well as Dr. Sri Lakshmi and we are bringing you yet another content. This time it's going to be Neuroophthalmology series. We are going to deal with nystagmus today. All right. Nystagmus is a fascinating thing. A lot of people make terrible mistakes in the examination while checking for nystagmus. First thing, not fixing head. You may think, well, I have to fix it. If you don't fix it, people have the tendency to turn the head to the left or to the right. That's the tendency of people. Have you noticed, especially in Asian countries, in saloons, a spa, wherever, like they keep the head again and again, they will fix the head. Otherwise, they'll keep turning the head here and there. You wouldn't want to do that. Next, just you have to pull up the eyelid gently by asking patients permission, especially if you're finding a toast eyelid. If you're going to elicit an astigmas in a toast eyelid, or if you're going to check the eye movements in a toast eyelid without gently averting the eyelid, or without even asking the patient to gently avert the eyelid, you are likely to fail. I have seen with my own eyes a candidate failing for that. Next, not fixing the finger. Okay, you have to fix the finger for at least 10 seconds to see an astigmas in the periphery. All right. The other thing you have to tell the direction of the nystagmus, amplitude and commenting on the fast component, it's very important. All right. Then don't forget to ask about the double vision. This is what happens if you don't fix the head. The patient will keep turning the head to the left and right and you will invent signs. Next, please don't stay very far away and make any kind of movements like this. Okay. Just because some online video library is teaching something like that. That's definitely not the way to check eye movements or nystagmus. All right, I'm going to start with the very first type of nystagmus we're going to see today is a physiological nystagmus. All right, or it's kind of a rapid gaze evoked nystagmus. It's present only in extremes of horizontal gaze. Within seconds, just comes down. All right, see here. This is a case of a gaze evoked nystagmus. All of you can see that? I believe, absolutely. All right, this is a case of a gaze evoked nystagmus. All right. Okay, the next type of nystagmus is CESA. I believe all of us would have played in CESA in the park. Okay, what is it? It's a conjugate, it's a torsional, and it's a vertical movement seen in the lesion of diencephalon, cellar, and any lesion in the paracellar area. So, what is a CESA? You know that, right? There will be a slab like thing with some support. Two people will sit on the opposite side and goes ups and down. All right. So just see this nystagmus. You will find a similar movement. Look at her eyes. See how the eye is moving. It's kind of moving up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's your classical C saw nystagmus i hope all of you got it yeah perfect then comes the downbeat nystagmus okay any abnormalities in a cervical medullary junction or in posterior midline cerebellar disease you are likely to get this kind of a downbeat nystagmus watch carefully this is a case of a downbeat nystagmus all right this is a case of a downbeat nystagmus Now comes to upbeat nystagmus. And nystagmus beats upwards. Any lesion in the medulla or posterior fossa tumor will lead to an upbeat nystagmus. Watch this nystagmus carefully. See the direction of the beating. It goes up, 
it's an upbeat nystagmus contrary to the last nystagmus which we have seen which is a downbeat nystagmus this is an upbeat nystagmus any lesion in the medulla or in the posterior fossa tumors you get this classical upbeat nystagmus all right then comes your convergence retraction nystagmus this is a component of a perinod syndrome or a dorsal midbrain syndrome you will have a convergence retraction nystagmus you'll have a light near dissociation you'll have an up gaze palsy you know you have skew deviation all those stuff all right now i'm going to show you how a convergent retraction nystagmus looks like just pay careful attention see her eyes see the convergence and the nystagmus see the convergence and the nystagmus see here see the convergence and the nystagmus see the convergence and the nystagmus this is a convergence retraction nystagmus of dorsal midbrain syndrome or perinod syndrome now comes to the burns nystagmus this burns nystagmus is a rapid small amplitude nystagmus it's away from the side of the lesion and there is a slow large amplitude nystagmus that's towards the side of the lesion see here very carefully okay there are two things the small amplitude one will be away from the side of the lesion and the large amplitude one towards the side of the lesion typically you will get this nystagmus in case of a cp angle tumors all right so watch carefully as the neurologist move the reflex hammer away so watch carefully see the amplitude of the nystagmus it's a very small amplitude nystagmus okay away from the side of the lesion and a large amplitude nystagmus that occurs towards the side of the lesion classically you will get in any cerebral pontine angle tumors it can be acoustic neuroma meningioma ependymoma neurofibroma whatever it is you are likely to get this thing all right okay now finally we come to the difference between central and peripheral vertigo and associated nystagmus all right this is something associated with nystagmus so i just want to tell you in case of a peripheral it's always going to be sudden onset vertigo and central gradual and the duration it's going to be seconds to minutes where it's variable over here the intensity will going to be severe in peripheral vertigo and central it's going to be mild all right when it comes to the nystagmus here the peripheral nystagmus is unidirectional it's never going to be vertical where a central nystagmus can be horizontal vertical rotatory and bidirectional obviously peripheral nystagmus or peripheral vertigo you won't find any neurological finding here you will find auditory finding will be very occasion uh, occasionally you will get in peripheral but nothing in central nystagmus unless and otherwise you know you get an eighth cranial in involvement in case of cp angle tumor or anything like that so causes are your bppv your otitis media your labyrinthitis meniere's disease vestibular neuronitis trauma here your meningitis your F encephalitis vertebrobacillar insufficiency cerebellar hemorrhage temporal lobe epilepsy and tumors like that of your cp angle tumors all right i hope that helps it's a very short video on nystagmus we will bring up some more exciting neuroophthalmology content for you and stay tuned please like share and subscribe and best wishes to all the exam going candidates and all the candidates who are preparing for mrcp uk paces ireland or whatever form of internal medicine examination whichever country you are from warm welcome and best wishes do visit our site www.paces.uk and thank you so much from mj wesley and also from dr sarah and dr sri lakshmi thank you have a good day